going to be conducting a class on breads, especially European breads, uh, like the French baguette, the shabata, the focaccia, and the multigrain bread. Okay, so I are ready to learn. Okay, so uh, talking about breads, first let's just go through the ingredients. Uh, our most basic ingredient is flour, which I'm going to use only refined flour today. We'll have uh, classes of different other flour like rye flour and whole wheat flour later on. Today only refined flour. Okay, so refined flour is our base which I'm going to use today. Then our next ingredient is salt. Now salt obviously it gives the taste to the bread. Apart from that, it also helps control the yeast, the yeast from rising. It just gives a control over it, so it doesn't rise too much and goes out of control. Next we have sugar. Sugar is not used in all the rows like a French baguette has no sugar because now when you put sugar it also the more sugar you put the more softer your bread basically. The less sugar the more harder the bread. Harder as in just the outside crust is going to be hard the inside is going to be soft. Okay and sugar also gives the color to your to the crust of the dough. Then we have yeast. Yeast is also important because these are leavened breads. Leavened means breads which are resin with the with the yeast. Yeast is our leavening agent. It helps rise the breads and gives a nice spongy air, soft light feel to the breads. Uh, contrary to our Indian breads like the naan and chapati that has no yeast, that's just flat. Those are flat breads, these are leavened breads. Okay. And water uh, is used to combine the dough to make the dough obviously and that's it. These are the basic ingredients for making bread. Apart from this you can you can make a richer dough by adding eggs and butter and all sorts of stuff. Okay, so our basic ingredients, flour, salt, sugar, water, yeast. Okay, so let's start. First, I'm going to start with the shabata bread because that takes the longest time to make. Okay, so you all have your recipes in front of you all. I'm going to be mixing the, kneading the dough in the machine because kneading it by hand is going to take too much of your time and we just don't have the time because our bread needs to prove and that's also going to take time so we just do it in the machine. It is the same way uh, you need uh, uh, your chapati dough, yes? We have to make it in front of us. Okay. Hand blender? Uh, no, no. You, you can't use the hand blender because it's not going to work properly, okay. Okay. So fine, we can, I'll show you one dough which I'm going to need by hand, the focaccia dough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm actually using the machine just uh, to quicken the process. Okay. That's okay but yes, definitely. The focaccia dough I'll show you by hand. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, these two ingredients that I've used in all of the recipes are bread improver and gluten. Now they are not necessary to make your bread, but we use it in industries so that we have a good standard. Uh, bread improver is basically a chemical agent which helps in giving quality to your breads and to have a nice standard product. So all of your breads look the same. Whereas when you make it at home, all of them are not going to look the same. So this is basic for, uh, for industrial use, bread improver. You get it at uh, really big supermarkets or you'll have to import it from outside. Okay, I'm not sure from where you can get it right now, but there is this shop Dorabji's in MG Road. MG Road, Dorabji's? Yeah, MG Road where you might get it. Uh, the other ingredient is gluten. Gluten basically it is a protein which is already present in the flour, in the wheat flour. Now what this protein does it basically when it's mixed with water it gives it makes the dough elastic and helps create those structures which you see the holes it helps crea uh, create a nice strong structure so that your bread does not go flat. Okay. Uh, gluten is already <coughs> present in the flour as I said uh, about 12 to 15 percent of gluten is present in your flour. Now if you want a stronger flour you need to add more gluten. So when you are, when in, for your making breads you need to add more gluten that makes your bread nice and strong. Whereas for cakes you don't need to add gluten for your cakes because uh, your cake has to be soft and crumbly. Okay. Any more questions about the gluten and improver? You don't uh, use it, that's fine. You just need to find a strong flour. Basically, you even get two types of flour. Uh, your weak flour, which is used for cakes, that has a lesser proportion of gluten, and strong flour, which has a higher proportion of gluten. Or basically, you can even use all purpose flour. But. Uh, maida is what you Maida is, yeah. So, but uh, 
if you actually go to search, I am not sure where you can get these kind of uh, proportionate flowers. But even you, if you use an all-purpose flower, you can make a really good dough. I've this, made. This matter is also a particular matter that you are asking. No, no, all-purpose flower. You get it at the banyas anywhere okay. supermarket. Now, when I was growing up, when I used to make breads at home, I didn't know what gluten I improve. I, I couldn't get my hands on. I was just a kid. But I used to use this normal flour you're getting from the banya store, and I used to make my bread. So it should come out perfectly well. Okay, uh, I'm not going to be baking the bread over here. I'll just show you the the way we make the dough. I'll show you the makeup. I'll show you what needs to be done, the proving time, and all that. And then I'll show you the finished product, how the bread is going to look. Okay. So one question: Are you going to put this uh, gluten or bread in flour? In, uh, yes, I'm going to use it. Today. You can, Better you can just, not? yeah, you can just omit the gluten and improver. That's yes, not a problem. It don't really do. hamper the taste at all. Nothing will happen to the taste. Because why are you putting? You also don't. Put. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's in, in, in industries, we need to have a standard for all our breads. I need everything has to look perfectly. No, we, we understand that. But the thing is, I think I'm audible. Uh, but the thing is. Uh, we will not get all, we are not into the business, right? Yes. We are just going to make it for our own personal use. Yes, definitely. If we don't get the desired uh, result, how do we get the desired result minus these two things, ingredients? I got the desired result when I was a kid. So why don't you make one without these two things? Okay. And why don't you one? Yeah, at least we should know the taste. Uh, no, actually all of this is going to take a really long time. So I, I am, it will take time to prove. So, this is standard You use a strong flour for bread making, yes. which is white in color, as compared to the wheat flour, which you use for cakes, which is a very yellowish in color. Actually, all the flour is white. No, we don't. The stronger one is yellow, whitish in color. Okay. And the weaker one is a little yellowish in color. The gluten is slightly off white. It's like this creamy color, creamy color so kind of flour. Compare the two, the strong and the weak. Yes. You find the stronger one is whiter. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, so we start with a shabata bread because that's going to take a longer time. Okay. And please give away the secrets also. Yes, definitely. And so what are the secrets that we use at home? Otherwise, the result doesn't come home. Yes. Ever. I'm using uh, half the recipe of what I have given you all, exactly all the ingredients are divided by half because, well, this is just a small machine. Yeah. Yes? Okay. So uh, know what is the result? Okay, sure. But then you'll have to wait around four, five hours for the result. That's the thing because it's going to take time to prove and then bake down. So I have to bake it down so in the bakery. I wouldn't mind, but it's just going to take time. Uh, shea butter is a uh, bread from Italy. It is like the slipper shaped bread. It's it's not too big. It's just flat bread, and it's uh, it looks very flurry, basically like this. This is a shea butter. It's a very loose dough. Now, when I say loose, I mean it has a lot of water, so it's really soft. It needs to be really soft, and we need to fold it. I'll show you the process later on. Is, it's a very loose dough, so basically it's very sticky. So we, we need to add a lot of flour on your table and as well as on top, so that it doesn't really stick to your table while you're processing it. You add it also? Yes, the whole recipe is there. exactly. This. Yeah, I've mentioned 30 grams of. Grams. Yeah, 25. Uh, grams uh, on your weighing scale. If you have a weighing scale, if not, one tablespoon is 30 grams. So, you can use that. Okay, 
I'm sorry. Yes, yes. They even, everything goes half. Yes. Uh, this is just the all-in-one dough. No, no. You just crumble it and put it in your dough. Yes, you get yeast in the dough. Is there any particular Fresh yeast? yeast? Any particular uh, yeast? Pradeep, which brand are we using? Dorab yeast? Uh, yeah, I'm, there are many brands. Prestige. Prestige is the brand which you get in Dorab yeast. But is it like any specific, those instant easy mix? I'm sorry? Is it like any specific yeast, like those instant yeast? Yes, the instant yeast, that is a dry yeast. What you can do is, you, even if you get the dry yeast, it's fine. You use the same amount and you need to put it in some water before you add it to your dough. Okay? So we have to keep it in some 100 degree water or something? Warm water, lukewarm water. Okay, you get dry yeast. Uh, if you're not using fresh yeast, you can use dry yeast. You need to put the same amount in some lukewarm water, mix it up, and then you put it to your dough while you're making your dough. One tip. Uh, leveled. Always when you're measuring with tablespoons, it's leveled. The yeast. This is the yeast. It's like this brownish color. Okay, yeah. You have a plate. Now this yeast is basically not going to activate until it has, it gets its food and the food for yeast is sugar. Okay, uh, So when sugar and the yeast and the water combines, that's when the yeast starts activating and it releases carbon dioxide which in turn proves your bread, proves or rises your bread. Okay, Now uh, if you are not adding sugar in your dough, where will the yeast get the food? Basically sugar has carbohydrates, carbohydrates is the actual food for the yeast. Now even flour also has a certain proportion of carbohydrates, so the yeast eats up the carbohydrates from the flour itself. So this yeast doesn't need any activation? No, it doesn't need any activation. It starts activating once the water and the sugar mix with it, or even just the water. So you guys just put it like that? Yeah, you just sprinkle it in your dough. The best way to put yeast where you just put water, like leave more water, just add it so it will be like, you know, very uh, slurry kind of thing. It will mix equally in the flour. Yes, that is how it has to be. No, no, nothing. You just add in the water, like you, you just done the like you know grammage, then you put in the water and just add it in the flour. So it will equally it will be like mixed together. Like. How long do you put it in the water? Uh, just to melt it down because it is hot. So it takes only uh, maybe 30 seconds, not more than that. Yeah, that's it. Okay now. To further process the shabata, I'm going to take this steel container. You can take any shape container you have. Uh, make sure it's not too deep. It should be just about so much deep. Okay, I'm just going to grease the container. You can grease it with olive oil, normal oil, anything. Any oil is fine. As you can see, the dough is very loose, or this is what we say for a loose dough, when it's really soft, when it has a lot of water. When you were using the bread wok, yes. is there any particular uh, you know, the speed at which you have to do you need to, Yes, you need to start at a slow speed, so that well, basically your flour and everything just doesn't blow up. You need to start at a slow speed, and then slowly, slowly work your way up. Now, I 
used a paddle attachment. A paddle attachment is basically if I'm using a smaller uh, quantity of flour, a smaller recipe, because the hook is just going to take too much time. By the time the hook just rotates and rotates, it's going to take a really long time. So I use the paddle, which ha uh, makes it happen faster. Okay, so you just put this in your container and you press it down. Okay, so you just press it to the sides of the container, put this on a tray and now I am going to put this in the prover. This magical machine which we have over here, I am sure we are not going to have this in the house, but uh, we have to use it for industrial use. What the prover does is basically it creates a nice moist and warm environment so that your dough can rise, the yeast can activate because yeast activates at a temperature of 50 and above and that is when it starts uh, creating carbon dioxide and it starts puffing up. This is called proving, that is the term, the proper term for it is called proving when it starts rising. You can use a tea cozy as well. Tea cozy? Yeah. Or, I do not know what is a tea. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, what I used to do when I did not have a prover at home, I used to just use my microwave oven itself, switch it off and put the dough inside. So basically it is not going to have any air, it is not going to dry out. That is how I keep it moist inside. And you have to cover it with a damp cloth. You just take a damp cloth, squeeze it out completely till all the water is gone, that is your damp cloth and you cover your dough and you keep it in your microwave oven, switching it off, do not put the microwave on. Okay? So then once your dough is risen and all, when it is almost 80 percent on, you can take it out, start your microwave, I think your microwave should only take about 6 to 7 minutes to preheat and then you can put your dough in. Okay. Uh, so, this is going to take some time, till then do you have any questions about, I will show you the process what we are going to do further after it rises. Do we have any questions about this here water? Uh, if you are making it now, right? same thing that with the same dough on the table, how will you make it? I yeah. will make it. Machine, <coughs> the machine is not. Okay. No, even you can keep in the room temperature and cover with the wet cloth. For the, no, at I am not talking about that, to make a dough. To knead it. Kneading. Okay. It is just the same way how you no, make no, your, show one. okay I will show you the. I will show you the focaccia dough. I think it becomes too loose and it becomes too That depends on the water you add. I have no, written no, that. You know, it is so sticky that we have to keep on adding. I have done it, I have failed many times over, so that is how I know about it. Okay, now. You use cold water. No, 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 no. You do not use warm water for. No, because I activated the yeast. No, that is just a little bit of lukewarm water to activate that your dry yeast. But basically, the water which you are using to make the dough, it has to be cold. Because then your the whole thing is going to start activating while you are kneading your dough. You don't want the yeast to start activating while you are kneading the dough. You need to knead it first at a nice cold temperature, and then you keep it for proving. That's when it starts its activation. Actually, what happens? Our body it goes to dough. That's why it starts to melting and become chewy. So you use cold water. So it helps you to not. It will not cold become chewy. Normal fridge water. Ha, huh, fridge water. Yes. Or you just take normal water, put some ice cubes in that cold water, but don't put the ice inside. Cold water, basically, okay, water below, water below 5 degrees. Okay. You have to be very specific because we have come to learn. Yes, I know, I understand. All right, if you are going to give us vague answers, we, come okay. back, we go back the same way. Specific water, 5 degrees and lower, between 3 degrees to 5 degrees Celsius. Now you ask me specific, I give specific. So that's why I'm saying ice cold water. Either you take normal water and put ice in it, wait for it to become chilled, or just water, a bottle out of water kept in the fridge for a couple of hours, cold water. Okay, so while that is processing, I'll move on to the next uh, recipe. So we can have all the recipes made, and then it will be proving on its own. Then I'll show you the processes later. Okay, so our next recipe, I'm going to start the French baguette.
Yes, fresh yeast doesn't need any activation. You just directly add it to your loop. Okay, so we are making a baguette. Everybody has seen a baguette. It is the staple bread of France, these long elongated hard rolls. They basically have a nice hard crust on the outside and they are soft from the inside. Okay. Uh, how are you going to make a baguette if you do not have the baguette tray? This is a baguette tray, basically it is like waves. So how are you going to make a baguette at home without the baguette tray? I am just going to take. I will take a normal tray like this, okay. you have a smaller tray at home that is fine, make sure it is metal and you take some aluminum foil or silver foil, you need to crumble up the foil and you just line it like this way, it, it uh, even gaps. So what happens is your dough comes in the middle and then this is foil which creates this sort of this shape, this half U shape. Okay. If you cannot even do that then you need to get steel pipes. You can get a steel pipe from uh, the stores where you get the pipes okay? and you need to take it to a hardware guy and tell him to cut it halfway through and then he will open it up. So you get like this kind of a double U shape. You can use that also. This is just a makeshift kind of a tray which you can use in your house. Okay? For industrial use we have these things. 